went as far as death, handing over his life to destruction for the work of Christ. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So today we have just an abundance of um, beautiful saints, very, um, very important saints. And we have um, not only the official universal calendar, but St. Gianna Polo. And then we have St. Louis de Montfort, the one that gives us that true devotion to Mary. Then we also have another saint. His name is St. Peter Chanel. And he's the one that oh, a lot of times is forgotten in the midst of these other big giants. And I just felt that his, um, his call and his death um, is a very important one for us to really see this, this little guy who actually is such a beautiful, inspiring message of hope for us. So I'm going to share a little bit about his story, this little forgotten saint who is actually the patron of all of Oceania. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins. And so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And you came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who for the spreading of your church crowned St. Peter Chanel with martyrdom, grant that in these days of Paschal joy we may so celebrate the mysteries of Christ's death and resurrection as to bear worthy witness to newness of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The word of God continued to spread and grow. After Barnabas and Saul completed their relief mission, they returned to Jerusalem, taking with them John, who is called Mark. Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who was a close friend of Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work of which I have called them. Then, completing their fasting and prayer, they laid hands on them and sent them off. So they sent forth by the Spirit, went down to Seleucia, and from there sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived in Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. O God, let all the nations praise you. O God, let all the nations praise you. May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon earth, among all nations, your salvation. O God, let all the nations praise you. May the nations be glad and exult, because you rule the peoples in equity. The nations on the earth you guide. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. May the peoples praise you, O oh God. May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us, and may all the ends of the earth fear him. O oh God, let all the nations praise you.
whoever follows me will have the light of life. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. <clears throat> Jesus cried out and said, Whoever believes in me believes not only in me, but also in the one who sent me. And whoever sees me sees the one who sent me. I came into the world as light so that everyone who believes in me might not remain in darkness. And if anyone hears my words and does not observe them, I do not condemn him, for I did not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. Whoever rejects me and does not accept my words, it will condemn him on the last day, because I did not speak on my own. But the Father who sent me commanded me what to say and speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. So what I say, I say as the Father told me. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus says that he comes into this world as light so that everyone who believes in him might not remain in darkness. And those who believe in him are actually linked to the Father. They believe in the one who sent him. And so we can't move forward unless Jesus the light is shining first. That's what the early church of the Acts of the Apostles understood. The importance that the Spirit has to lead and then we follow. Wherein, as, as one of the great um, English hymns, in the tether of the Spirit, the sense of the ship of the Spirit in a sense going forth and we're in the wake and we're, we're moving through that the path that's created from the waters going to either side, and then we need to follow, not be in front of the Spirit, but to follow in the Spirit's wake. And it's only then when the apostolic mission becomes successful. Notice what happens here, and this is how the Word of God continues to spread and grow. They have prophets and teachers in this church at Antioch. Antioch is the first place in which the Christians were finally, or were first known by that name, Christian. And they get together, these different people, Barnabas, and Simeon, and Lucius, and Menaean, and Saul. And they're worshiping the Lord, they're fasting, and it's only then, in that prayer, that the Holy Spirit says, set apart or consecrate Barnabas and Saul for this particular mission to go out and to continue to, to preach the news. And, and in this mission, this is where several of those churches that we hear about in the New Testament are founded. Some of those famous churches are from this moment. But notice how it's not just Barnabas and Saul just saying, well, what are we going to do? You know, what program are we going to do? What's the next thing? But they stop. They pray. And they listen to the Holy Spirit. And then they have the courage to follow the Spirit. So that primacy of prayer is so important in our own lives. And, and I'll, I'll share in a moment about 
the importance of that for the missionary endeavors in Oceania, but also even in my own life, just very recently, um, in our parish, I have a, a leadership team called a, a PLT, a parish leadership team, and it's, it's four other parishioners that have been called to a particular mission of walking with me, praying with me, and really praying about how do we grow this missionary discipleship? How do we, how do we um, allow the, the, the soil of the faith in this land to grow more and more? And when we had started this, we thought of it more in terms of a, a, a practical business kind of meeting or so, you know, let's get things done. Um, but something started to happen in which we started to look at the importance of the primacy of prayer first and doing in, in much part what's happening in the Acts of the Apostles of making sure that we take not just the surface level amount of prayer, because don't we do this sometimes in our meetings and stuff? We say, all right, let's pray. Who's going to pray? And they're like, all right, I'll do it. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Lord, watch over us. Amen. And then we get to the rest of our stuff. And sometimes we just sort of stay on a surface there. But how powerful it is, is if we actually risk the inefficiency of taking even more time to pray, to worship, to pray for one another, and the Holy Spirit starts to work in amazing ways. There's actually more work that's done that we're finding by wasting time with the Lord first, and He actually gives us so much more because He he, he gives clarity, he gives vision, he gives more a deeper purpose than when we just kind of started and we're just doing very surface level prayers. And, and yesterday we had this powerful experience of even being willing to, and I found this in my own heart when we were doing adoration, it was like the Lord was saying, be vulnerable about something. And I was like, I don't want to do that. And yet the Lord just kept pushing and pushing and so when I opened up to my leadership team about this, and then the others started opening up in different ways, and there was like this breath of the Holy Spirit, this deep, deep fraternity and communio that was happening there. And then we just started praying for each other. And then after that, the Holy Spirit just kind of really just solidified a lot of things that we were already praying about, but he brought it to a deeper level about what are some of the things that the Lord is maybe calling us as a parish to, to, to move forward with. This is actually where that first Fridays, that, that community outside and adoration and praying over people, it, it came out of that kind of experience of just saying, Lord, you know what you desire for the parish, so let's go to you first. Let's go to the Holy Spirit first, instead of trying to do it on our own steam. And so I've been experiencing this renewal of the primacy of prayer and how the Lord really does honor wasting time with the Lord, breaking the alabaster jar and putting it on the Lord. And our mind might race to saying, well, we could have used it for all these different things. We could have used our time in such better ways than spending time worshiping the Lord. And yet that's where the great fruit comes from. And so I would just encourage you, in your families, in your different ministry groups, in your parish groups, in your breakfast clubs, in these different groups of human society, to don't underestimate the importance of starting with prayer, but not just a surface level prayer. Really take time. Give the space to just thank the Lord, to pray for one another. And it is amazing how divisions break down. Unity happens in the midst of the diversity. And there's this deepening that happens. And that becomes a model also for the way that we're called to within our larger parish and larger church to be the witness in the world that is so wrought by so many different divisions and not knowing how to really love one another, that this becomes that, that, that witness of humility and mercy of saying, Lord, you alone can heal the divisions. And so we come to you first in prayer, opening our heart, 
so that you can make things fruitful. You can make a highway for the Lord. You can make the desert bloom and water spring out in places that we didn't even believe were possible. And you can bring our families back to a family by first living it out ourselves in our own small groups, in our own experiences, and in our own families. So how does this impact the story of St. Peter Chanel? I want to just read in the Magnificat this little brief bio of him. He was born in France. Peter joined the newly founded Society of Mary, so he would have been a, a Marist, in 1831. In 1836, he was sent out on mission to the Southwest Pacific Islands, landing on Futuna, with Brother Mary Nisar. The missionaries struggled to learn the language, find shelter, and raise food. They finally cultivated a tiny garden, only to have it plundered by natives. Their apostolic labors over three years produced a mere handful of frightened converts. Yet Peter always remained kind, gentle, and cheerful doing all he could to help anybody. On April 28th, 1841, an emissary of, of the native chief killed Peter as he went to get the man some medicine. Now Peter is the proto-martyr, the first martyr of Oceania. And there's something in here that they don't mention. They mention about just the... the all of, his, all of his service, all that he was doing over three years, and he only just had like a couple people that were following. Everyone else was just like, you know, I could care less about this guy, Peter. Who is this guy? He's annoying. You know, oh, he's got a little garden? Well, let's just plunder it. And it's like that whole thing of he's, he's, he's investing, he's, he's giving his whole life, and he's not even seeing any fruit. And yet he remained cheerful. He remained joyful, and he remembered the importance of that this is the Lord's work, and he's an instrument in that. And so he didn't fall into despair. He didn't say, hey, how come nothing's happening here? He wasn't looking to that. He was just saying, I need to be obedient to what God is calling me to. He called me here to preach the gospel, and I'm going to do it. He called me to love these people, and even if they're not loving me back, I... This is what I'm supposed to do. So I'm planting the seed. God's the one who causes the growth. So I'm not going to worry about what happens. So he's killed. And it seems like, well, that was a waste. He spent all of that time. No one on the island, except for maybe five or ten people, cared. And the way that the rest of the people showed their gratitude was just by killing him. But after he died... There was a shockwave of contrition that happened among the entire people of that island. And the whole island converted to Christianity. After he died, the fruit started to go, started to blossom. He didn't see it on the side of life. Imagine all of the temptations for him just to give up, to maybe leave the island. And yet he stayed there all the way till death. But it was only in his death that people were woken up. And they gave their lives to the Lord. Do you see how he focused on prayer? He focused on being faithful to the Lord and what the Lord was calling him to in prayer. And he allowed the Lord to be the one who was responsible for the growth. When you feel discouraged, when you feel like nothing's happening and you're just trying to till the ground and all you're reaping is just stones over and over again, look to this saint, St. Peter Chanel, a little forgotten saint even forgotten by the people during his time. And yet, what a great missionary. 
who converted the island after he died. that 
my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we commemorate the martyrdom of Blessed St. Peter Chanel, O Lord, we make our offerings at your altar, praying that we who celebrate the mysteries of our Lord's Passion may imitate what we now do. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you. 
through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command and performed by divine teaching, he dares to say, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, the glory of yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. loses his life for the sake of the gospel, will say that says the Lord, Hallelujah.
As we celebrate the heavenly banquet, we beseech you, Lord, that in following such a great example of faith, we may be encouraged by the remembrance of the blessed martyr St. Peter Shannon, and led on by his gracious intercession. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. Be our beacon of holy prayer. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember of the most gracious Virgin Mary. Sinful and sorrowful, O Mother of the 